Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Field Facts with Forrest. You'll notice I'm not in an airplane hangar. It's a little bit nicer than that. I'm actually here with Kyle Jones. He's on the other side of the camera hanging out with me here. And we are at Flatland Flyways in Hecla, South Dakota. My God, this place is awesome. Absolutely freaking love it. So uh, we have the lodge to ourselves. Uh, we're kind of between guests right now. It's just Kyle and I, we got the place to ourselves. We've been blowing calls all night and we decided there was something that we needed to cover. And that was an intro to Speckle Belly Goose Calling. All right, and let us, Chief Barbelly, ready to rep it. This is gonna be a good time, all right? So for those of you guys who are, you know, intermediate spec callers to advanced guys, this one's not gonna be as much for you. I'll, I'll do a little bit of higher end stuff or, or uh, higher difficulty stuff uh, that you can listen to there. And if you've got questions, please uh, email me or message me and, and I'd love to talk to you about that. But this is catered to uh, the guys who are just getting started, okay? So um, we talked a little bit about uh, how to choose your call last time. Uh, we talked about picking out duck calls, goose calls, same thing goes for speckle belly calls. Early on, as uh, a beginning caller, your skill level uh, will not reach the potential of a certain call. So you don't necessarily have to go out there and spend a ton of money on, a, on an initial goose call to learn on. You can pretty much learn on most beginner, you know, priced goose calls. Or if you wanna buy an acrylic, nice call, go for it. You're probably not going to outgrow it. Um, but if you're really concerned about what call is gonna fit you, it doesn't really matter when you're getting started. Just get any call to get going, get a call in your hands and start practicing because that's what's gonna make the difference, all right? So all the calling we're doing tonight, I'm gonna to be doing it with the Tim Ground Super Spec. Uh, this is one of the earlier editions and it's awesome. Hand cut guts by uh, Ken White, the Babe Ruth of Speco, call, Speco Belly Calling. Uh, he's an absolute monster. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna be doing stuff on this and we're gonna talk about just a few main things, uh, a few very simple rudimentary notes that can help you sound like instead of a speckle belly goose collar, a group of speckle belly geese, okay? So we're gonna start with a couple things uh, and we're gonna start very basic. We're going to go and we're gonna start with the cluck, all right? So the cluck is just a very short, simple bloop, just like you'd hear on a Canada goose call, but because this call is tuned a lot differently, uh, it's gonna be a lot higher pitch. So if you're a Canada goose caller already, this one's fairly simple. Um, it's just a nice short burst of air through the call going hoot, 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 <laughs> into the back of the call, it sounds like this. <laughs> and I, uh, I was pushing pretty hard there. You don't typically have to push very hard uh, with these spec calls, they're nice and light. So um, you can change the pitch and the tone all based on the air pressure. Um, but essentially what we're looking for in the cluck is just something like this. started to roll it just a little bit instead of going hut 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 you start to just get a little bit lazy with your mouth and go hut to hut to hut to hut so it's it's very simple to go from to and um, that's a great sound that's going to to help you be really nice and realistic um, when I'm using uh, the clocks, typically I use it to either start them to get to turn around in a comeback call scenario, uh, or as they're starting to finish down at the end of the spread, if, if they start to, to land too far out, I'll start building up with clucks. And if you and another buddy can do some clucks together, it can really sound like some geese getting excited, which will draw those speckle bellies up your spread all the way to you, all right? So again uh just a nice short series of clucks <laughs> nothing too crazy uh and, and it starts out you can start out slow and just nice concise clucks uh, and then you can build up to those nice rolling patterns of geese getting more and less excited all right, uh, so the next one we're gonna talk about is a yodel, all right? Now, this one, uh, if you go back and watch a YouTube video of me about 10 years ago, it's kind of funny to see me explain it then versus explain it now, uh, and I've learned a lot about it. Uh, to get started, just to think about the diaphragm control that you need to do this, 
Uh, I, I've always told people, he, he, ha, ha, and that is the most elementary um, but basic way to explain the diaphragm work. And it's not the finished product that you're going to get, but it's going to teach you how to find the break in the call. All right, so when I say he, he, or ha, ha, the point is that I want to break the call over from the bottom note to the top note twice, all right? Now, that's not what the finished note sounds like. That's just finding how, where the air comes from and how to break the call over, where it feels nice with your hands, uh, all of that. So, he, he, ha, ha is going to find your diaphragm pressure. And then when you get into actually uh, speckle belly calling, you want to try to stay on top of that break as long as you can. And uh, some people call it bending the note, uh, but basically it, it gives you a more of a live tone. So instead of just a very standard and black and white, he, he, ha, ha, you want to make it last and make it stay on top as long as you can. <laughs> I'm kind of bouncing, and just as soon as I touch down, it drops below just very briefly. She goes, loo, loo, look, and it ends on top. That's one thing that uh, Ken taught me is 99% of the speckle belly notes you want to make uh, end on top of the break. All right, so stay above that break as long as you can and go, And something else that you might notice here uh, is I'm putting scratch into the call. And that's basically just the same thing as a murmur uh, in a Canada Goose call. It's just a little bit of voice before I go into my yodels. <laughs> so uh, it gives it just that little bit of a nice little scratch at the beginning of things. <laughs> That's basically how to do the yodel. Two notes, three notes, uh, varied pitches and speeds. It's all good stuff. <laughs> Those are yodels, all right? Now, the next thing I want to talk about is a murmur, all right? Now, when we do the murmur, it's very, very similar to a Canada Goose call. Uh, just voice inflection into the call. You can vary the, the, the shape of your hands a little bit uh, to get different sounds. You'll notice... When I'm calling, when I'm blowing a speckle belly call, I'm basically building a big chamber in my hands, just a big round hole in there for a nice, rich, full-bodied sound uh, to be made. When I start doing this murmur, I might close off my on hand or open up my off hand uh, to just vary things and get a little bit different sound. Uh, when specs are murmuring on the ground, um, they, they a lot of times get to buzzing going, it's not just like um, if you get a couple guys doing it a couple different paces and cadences can sound pretty good but uh, I really like to try to focus on some of the bigger beehive type noises because uh, it can sound like a lot of specs start doing that, uh, you can start adding clucks to it, all right? So, <laughs> so you can do that, and now all of a sudden, instead of sounding like uh, one or two little specks, uh, you know, you can sound like a whole bunch of them, okay? So as we work through all that stuff, um, you know, that, that murmur is kind of the, the glue that brings it all together and gives you a lot of lifelike noise, okay? So, um, bringing it all the way back around, clucks, yodels, and a murmur, those three things, if you can do those uh, in, in really uh, any half-decent way, you can start having success with speckle bellies because speckle bellies are very, very, I'm not going to say easy to call, but they're very uh, adept to listening, and you can, instead of having to call a giant flock, usually pick out one bird, and you can call him in, uh, and, and uh, they like to call back. So it's not like a mallard or a Canada goose where there's, there's maybe some noise or a lot of noise going on in the case of lessers. 
it's more so having a conversation with one goose. So if you get one goose that responds well to a certain note that you hit, hit them with that same note again and call to that one goose, all right? If you can get that one goose to come in, the rest of them will work. So I'm going to start out, I'm gonna do a little sequence. Uh, it's gonna be fairly short and, and simple, but I'm basically gonna see a speckle belly uh, and, and the idea is that, that he's being receptive. I'm gonna hit a few notes in a row, the same note that he likes, uh, act like he's kind of going out. He'll, he'll kind of come in, swing around, go out a little bit, try to get one more turn and kind of finish him. Um, this is very similar to duck calling in uh, volume uh, and when you would call and when you would call is by far more important than how you call. Uh, but thinking about getting loud on the corners and when they're, they're facing away. So the old adage is tips and tails. I like to think about that that way with speckle bellies uh, and getting down into the low end, the murmurs and the clucks when I'm trying to finish them, all right? So we're gonna see him in the distance here, work him around, he's gonna make one turn and then come into the decoys, okay? I wish it always went like that. There you go. And hopefully um, at that point, the bird's ready to come in. So um, there's a, a little bit of everything. And I know I covered a lot of stuff on this. Uh, any questions you've got along with anything else uh, field facts related, please send me an email at forest at divebombindustries.com. Again, that's forest with two R's at divebombindustries.com or hit me up on my Instagram. Uh, really, I'm, I'm just happy to help you however I can. Go ahead, like and subscribe. Uh, down below. And please, if you haven't already, uh, follow the Dive Bomb uh, YouTube page here, and we'll try to keep you updated with everything that's going on along with some great videos now that we're rolling in hunting season. Thanks for watching, and we'll be back again here with another episode of Field Facts with Forest.